Good morning, I'm Rebecca Davidson. I'm Hannah Bakshi, and this is Inside Jacksonville, a production of the UNF Department of Communication and CW17. We're here each month with stories about life on the First Coast on topics important to all of us. This month, we're exploring domestic violence, a dirty little secret that most of us would like to pretend just doesn't exist. And it's violence that takes many forms. When most of us think of domestic violence, we usually think of couples, men abusing women. In fact, that is the most common form of domestic violence. Kayla Beckman joins us to introduce us to a woman with an extraordinary story. Kayla? More often than not, people in abusive relationships don't even realize there's a problem. Not at first. Once they do realize it, doing something about it is pretty hard, and reconstructing a normal life is a monumental accomplishment. I'd like for you to meet a very impressive woman who was able to put the pieces back together again. Somebody going to be home all evening? Okie doke. Robin Fairbanks has a pretty normal life. She's a mother and a successful businesswoman. She lives in St. Petersburg. She loves spending time out on the water with her boyfriend. But Fairbanks' life was not always like this. In fact, 25 years ago this month, her life almost ended. I could feel that something changed with my husband right at that moment. Fairbanks is a victim of domestic violence. Her then husband brutally beat, stabbed, and almost killed her. She saw the problems building for a long time. She just didn't know they were really warning signs. I started noticing um, difficulties, that issues with uh, uh, you know, anger and anger management and that type thing. I noticed that he made great efforts to keep us all isolated from my family. So the isolation factor was, um, was something that concerned me. But even with that, you know, I, I, again, you know, it was sort of the same excuse that, well, you know, he's, just, he's under a lot of stress. You know, it's stress that's causing, causing him to be controlling. They're not going to want to let go. Kathy Pinnell is a victim's advocate at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. She says Fairbanks is a classic case. If they recognize the signs immediately, um, it's, it's best to break that relationship off right away. And, um, and you have your best chance of ending it. Uh, the longer you stay in it, the more difficult it is. Jacksonville police know better than anyone that domestic violence is a growing problem, not only nationwide, but in Jacksonville as well. In Duval County, there were nine domestic violence related murders just last year. This year, there's already been 10. Federal records show domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women. They show a woman in the U.S. is either assaulted or beaten an average of every nine seconds. At least three women are killed by their boyfriends or husbands every day. Fairbanks was lucky. She escaped. For her, Hello, this is Robin. life goes on. It was literally overnight. I really do. I think that it had built up to that point to such a degree, and I had just suppressed and suppressed and suppressed to the point that, like I told you, I, I looked in the mirror one day literally and didn't recognize myself and said, you are no longer living your life. This is not you. I don't know who you are, but it's not who you want to be or should be or need to be. I've, I've lived 25 years longer than I thought I was going to. I've been able to see all of my children grow up and become, you know, wonderful young men. Um, I have two grandchildren. I mean, I just, I, I'm so totally blessed. And after 25 years, Robin is finally at peace. Fairbanks also told me that although what happened to her was horrible, the important thing is, is that she reclaimed her life. She says that today she is finally the strong, independent person that she's always wanted to be. Rebecca? 
Kayla, what was the most impressive thing that you noticed about Fairbanks? You know, the most impressive thing that I noticed about her was just her strength and her courage. When we sat down to talk about this and she shared her story, you know, this is obviously something that she struggles with every day, but when she was able to tell it to me, it really did show how strong she really is. Rebecca? Thank you, Kayla. Well, Jacksonville High School is taking notice of domestic violence. And it's an eye-opener for the students. These students at Douglas Anderson High School are writing short skits. Each skit focuses on a different issue they may encounter, from suicide to drug use to relationship violence. These students are producing something they hope others can relate to. This group plans to raise awareness by performing their work in middle schools across Jacksonville. Bonnie Harrison started this program several years ago. I think it gets people talking about their stories in an open way and using the vehicle of theater to just put it on its feet and get it out there I think is a really effective effective way um, to, to shed light on different topics. The DA program may be especially important for these students. The numbers show that among <coughs> young people abusive relationships are on the rise. Still, young people are the same as everyone else when it comes to abusive relationships. The surprise, the shame, no different. That's what happened to one young woman I spoke with recently. She spent almost a year in a dangerous relationship before she was able to break away. She said she'd speak with me on camera only if we concealed her identity. Thought it's a relationship, you know, people have problems, everyone gets in fights, you know, you see your friends having, having fights, relationship problems, and you just think like, oh, like maybe mine are just worse today than someone else's. But looking back on the reality of the situation, it really, it really was bad. I know your boyfriend's supposed to be someone that takes care of you, makes you feel safe, makes you feel protected. The person that you come to when you're scared or you need help. And instead, he was somebody that I was scared of. Like, he this young woman's story is a lot more common than you'd think. Many young people, a lot of them students, find themselves in violent relationships. Figures from a national clearinghouse are eye-opening. They say women between 20 and 24 years old are at the greatest risk of being injured by a partner. Some one in five female high school students reports being physically and or sexually abused by a dating partner. And one out of every four individuals will be involved in some kind of domestic abuse in their lifetime. Yes, that's individuals. That 25% includes men. Sheila Spivey is the director of the UNF Women's Center. She says men are most often victimized by female stalkers. Stalking is oftentimes connected to some type of interpersonal violence. Um, typically, when we see stalking cases, there's either been a sexual violence um, act that has actually been committed um, or it's in relationship to a dating um, relationship. The natural tendency for victims of violence is to keep quiet, remain anonymous. They're often ashamed. What they really need is help, but most don't know where to turn. The Betty Griffin House is one place here on the First Coast that offers help. And the relief they offer isn't just for women. Men, children, teens, anyone in danger can find help with them. And the location of the house is kept a secret to ensure safety for those victims. Joyce Marr is the director of Betty Griffin. She says that more and more young people are becoming a victim of domestic violence. You know, typically 16, between 16 and 24 years of age is the age that a majority of um, individuals are being um, abused, whether it's through sexual assault or through a dating violence relationship. So uh, college age students are at, a, are at a greater risk of being harmed um, during that time. Mar says part of the problem is that young people just haven't been taught what a good relationship looks like. Society tells them so often that it's okay to be pushed or shoved or talked down to, um, and that's not the case. Um, you know, you have a right to be treated with respect and dignity, and, uh, and many times they don't realize that they're being abused verbally or physically. Um, and it's Sometimes I think the kids just are so accepting uh, because they want someone to love them or it's a new relationship. I didn't know where to go. Marie Hobbs sought help at the Betty Griffin house. It took her a while, years, before she realized she was in an abusive relationship. And she met her abuser when she was just 18 years old. On the outside, he was very um, likable to everyone. Um, 
although behind closed doors it was different. Um, I know sometimes people, it's an embarrassing situation when you realize that there's something, something happening to you, especially if you're young. It's been 10 years since Hobbs got out of that dangerous relationship. She said the most important thing victims should understand is that they don't have to face it alone. No one should have to um, go through the process of someone demeaning them or belittling them. And so if, if you're feeling that or if you see that your friends may be in that situation, get a hotline number to somebody. Just know that um, they're there. Much like all homes that shelter abused women, the Betty Griffin House keeps its location under wraps. But if you need help, here's how to get in touch with them. The Betty Griffin Crisis Hotline at 904-824-1555. Again, to contact the Betty Griffin House, call 904-824-1555. Now, Rebecca, I had a quick question. Did the counselors ever mention why this problem is increasing for young women? You know, something that really stuck out to me that they, they talked about was that just the way society in general views violence these days has really impacted the way young people view violence in a violent relationship. You know, they've kind of dumbed it down to where if a young person's in a violent relationship, they may not think it's as bad as something they've seen on TV or something to where they might not go and get help. Wow, that's sad. Now some people wonder if what we see on TV, the movies and the video games are making things worse. When we come back, you'll see that the answer depends on who you ask. I'm Joe Hellrigal and coming up on Inside Jacksonville, I'll tell you what one educator is trying to do to change domestic violence and what one professor here at UNF has to say about it. Stay tuned.